For Judge Jackson, Republicans have focused on several issues, including critical race theory, gender ideology, abortion, and the judge's prior rulings, particularly related to her handling of child pornography cases and criminal sentencing. Do you believe the voice of the children is heard when 100 percent of the time you're sentencing child porno uh, those in possession of child pornography to far below what the prosecutor's asking for? I take these cases very seriously as a mother, as someone who, as a judge, has to review the actual evidence in these cases. Congress is the body that tells sentencing judges what they are supposed to look at. And in every case, I did my duty to hold the defendants accountable in light of the evidence and the information that was presented to me. Adam White, law professor at the Antonin Scalia School of Law and senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, joins us now to weigh in on these hearings. Adam, thank you for coming back and joining us. Let's start with your input on what we just heard. Republicans say Jackson has been too light-handed on child porn offenders. Jackson says she's limited by the laws created by Congress. What are your thoughts? Well, Judge Jackson pointed to the discretion that Congress has given her. I think we can criticize both the way she exercised that discretion and the, the, the amount of discretion that Congress gave to her and other judges in the first place. So we mentioned earlier that Jackson refused to weigh in on court packing as well. You were on the Biden administration's commission to look at court packing. What's your analysis of that? Well, in the run-up to the hearings, I, I urged senators to ask her both about court packing and, more importantly, about criticism of the court's legitimacy. She sidestepped questions about court packing, saying she didn't want to weigh in on a policy dispute. But she did engage the legitimacy question in a, in a back and forth with Senator Sass. And I was glad to see that she, she did not join the, the attacks on the court's legitimacy that we've seen from Senator Elizabeth Warren and other activists. That's good to hear. Senator Lindsey Graham, then, he had some invasive lines of questioning on religion. Let's take a listen. What faith are you, by the way? Senator, I am um, Protestant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Non-denominational. Okay. Could you fairly judge a Catholic? Senator, I have a record of I fairly think the answer would be yes. judging yes. everyone. I believe you can. <laughs> Graham makes a comparison there. He was, I think providing a parody in this line of questioning for uh, comparison to Judge Barrett and what she faced in the Court of Appeals confirmation with the dogma living loudly within her. He did start to drill down on whether Judge Jackson goes to church on Sunday. Was this fair? I don't think it was fair for the nominee. I understand that Senator Graham was, like, as you said, parodying the, the horrific mistreatment that Judge Barrett suffered in her own first confirmation hearing. I think that ugly episode teaches us that senators really need to stare far clear of these sorts of questions. No religious tests for us here in America. Religious freedom cases also are heading to the Supreme Court more and more. Senator Cornyn specifically mentioned the Little Sisters of the Poor related to the contraceptive mandates for health care. And Judge Jackson said that religious freedom is a core foundational constitutional right. Do you think she'll be supportive of religious liberty in future cases? Well, I don't doubt that she believes that religious liberty is a core right. The question, though, for a judge is what happens when it collides with administrative agencies or other or, or governors or others who try to assert other priorities, uh, including regulatory or, or anti-discrimination laws against religious groups in ways that really do burden religious liberty. I'll be curious to see what she actually does in real cases. It's interesting that everyone says that she'll be like um, Justice Breyer. Justice Breyer was in the majority for many religious freedom cases in the past. Does that give you hope? It certainly does. I, I thought that the nominee performed pretty well throughout the hearing and oftentimes even sounded almost Scalia-like in her, her statements regarding the Constitution and its text. But again, of course, the challenge is what happens in real cases. That's true. Race and gender ideology, let's talk about that. They also came up in the line of questioning. Let's take a listen to that. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The, of the judge didn't weigh in on gender ideology in this way. What about race? Was race an issue? 
the judge tried to say as little as possible on these subjects. In basketball season, we'd say that she and Democrats played a prevent defense, where they were just trying to avoid points being scored on them. And I think her exchange here with Senator Blackburn and on, on issues related to race uh, are similar examples where she was just trying to say as little as possible to avoid alienating either folks among conservatives or, or those among progressives. And is that common? I mean, she's been through a bunch of these hearings. I wonder sometimes if that should be changed, the process that we have. Well, the process isn't perfect. And, and obviously, we saw the downsides of it in this uh, confirmation hearing. Although, again, we did see great discussions of the Constitution, its meaning, the role of the court. And so in the end, I think we should be happy for what we have and, and try to keep making it better. Final question. The judge doesn't seem like she would alter current federal abortion laws related to viability. She talked about precedent, though, which could be the reason. What does this mean for the pro-life movement? Well, hopefully by the time Judge Jackson joins the Supreme Court this summer, uh, the court will have already decided the fate of Roe. And if so, then I hope that if Judge Jackson joins the court, which I expect her to, this fall, she'll be willing to respect the precedents that, that, that roll back Roe v. Wade as much as, as she says she would respect other new precedents. Well, Adam, thank you so much. We look forward to having you back. Thank you.